Here we are, motoring up the German Bight towards the Kiel Canal. It's just coming on for dinner time. It's seven o'clock, sun's getting low, and we came out of Holland this morning, left our berth in Harling at eight o'clock, and I had a remarkably fortunate experience. I've never been able to find out what the tide does in the channels running out across Riddle of the Sands country to get to the outside from Harlingen. Harlingen's right down in Holland near the dam uh, that, 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 that shuts off the Isselmere. As you come out of there, you come up through a series of channels and finally pop out like a champagne cork into the North Sea. Or you hope you do. But actually, normally when I come out of there, I find I've got the tide on the nose and I'm going nowhere. But I can't find anywhere that'll tell me which way the tide's going. Well, today I got it right by pure chance. And we did eight knots all the way up through the channels. The tide turned as we got to the outside and then we were squirted up into the German Bight at eight knots. Absolutely fantastic because we're a boat that sails comfortably at six knots and that's what we had to start off with but it's all gone to rats now. Breeze has gone round onto the nose. It's only about eight knots so it's not too serious and uh, it looks like it'll take off for the rest of the night. Unfortunately, We've got a horrible sea running in out of the north, a nasty old swell coming in, which is making life a bit uncomfortable. Don't know why it should do that, but uh, there you go. You don't know what's going on up there, up towards the North Cape of Norway. So um, we just have to put up with it. But I remember years ago, coming up here in Herta, my old pilot cutter. Oh, what a trip we had. We came direct from, uh, from the Solent on that occasion. We'd come up all the way around Texel on the corner of Holland, and now we're steaming up towards the Kiel Canal, sailing along at eight knots in a northerly gale. Absolutely awful. And that boat used to leak all the time, uh, and she leaked particularly when sailing in hard weather like that. And in order to get the pump to work, the pump was an old-fashioned pump worked on the deck, and a big hole on the deck, and a sort of village pump that brought the sea up uh, out of the bilge and chucked it back where it belonged, over the side. It sort of welled out over the deck and ran away. Um, not a nice thing, really, but it, was, it had been there for 80 years, and so we lived with it, and it worked so reliably. But to get it to go, you had to draw a bucket of water and tip it down the barrel to prime it. And this is not very nice when the boat's thundering along at that sort of speed and the big sea's coming down and it's dark. Anyway, we noticed that um, there was all sorts of stuff being chucked up on deck and uh, as we poured the, um, the water down to prime the pump in the first light of morning, we realised that it had sand in it. It was bringing up sand from the bottom of the sea. It was so rough and so horrible. So, well, that was a bit of a trip. This one isn't half as bad as that. It's not bad, really. We've got the old wind farm out here, supplying the good Germans with their power to cook their dinner. They've got one or two of the rotors charged up, but most of them aren't doing anything. I don't know what it's doing, really, but anyway, there it is. It's right on our path, so we've had to dive into uh, in towards Germany a little bit to get past it, but uh, it's all a bit of fun. It gives you something to look at. And um, I think about what's going on over there in the islands. That's real riddle of the sands country. And, you know, everybody talks about Riddle of the Sands as one of the great pieces of nautical literature. And it's a well-written book. I admire it and I've enjoyed it um, many times in my life. But the book I prefer is the book written by Sam Llewellyn called The Shadow on the Sands, which is a sort of sequel to Riddle on the Sands. And it's just a wonderful book to me. It's a real sailor's book. He gets inside the head of an Edwardian professional yacht hand, a man who races against the Kaiser, falls in love with beautiful women, <laughs> deals with terrible situations and finally comes out on top. So if you haven't read Shadow on the Sands and you want a really good read, I should get yourself a copy. It's available on the internet, I'm sure, and I'm going to read my copy tonight because it's just over there that it all happened. What a great read it is. So, well, we're pressing on now. I'm going to go and have my dinner. I've got some venison casserole that Ros has dredged up out of the, um, out of the fridge. So I'm looking forward to that. It's a bit rough for mashing the spuds, so we opened a, opened a can of spuds and chucked them in. And it's the start of a five-day stew, but with God's willing, we won't need it, because we should be in, uh, in the Kiel Canal by lunchtime tomorrow. I hope so. I'll probably report from there. And in the meantime, well, <laughs> have a good night, wherever you are. I'm getting ready for one on the North Sea.